Oh yeah, number 11. Okay, so uh, just as a reminder, I'll uh, do this really quickly. What we did yesterday, uh, we would love to do, uh, we've got a little problem, we'd love to solve it by direct substitution. Unfortunately, we can't solve it with direct substitution because we have uh, fractions of fractions, and well, that's not that big of a deal, but if you plug in negative two here, we end up with a zero in this denominator, okay? Ooh, we don't like that, not a lot by math. So what I said is, we're going to combine those fractions in the denominator, then we're gonna actually do uh, the old uh, division and multiplication by a reciprocal trick, which I'll show you right here in a second. Um, and then some things will cancel out, and we'll end up with a little not answer. So, uh, just to get you your mind where we were yesterday, what we, the first thing we did, and this should already be in your notes, we wanted to combine those two fractions, which are in the denominator, and the way you combine fractions is make sure that they themselves have a common denominator. So the common denominator here would be two times x plus two. So I take this term and multiply it by two over two, and I take this term right here and multiply it by two plus x over two plus x. The numerator here stays the same, it's just x. The, denom uh, the denominator of the two times one, so that's just gonna be two. We left this uh, these in factored form, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to volleyball too? Huh? Yeah. You're getting all packed up there. Mm -hmm. Two times x plus two. Then we have a minus sign, and then we have one times this two plus x, so I'm just gonna leave that as two plus x, all over two times x plus two. All right, we'll draw an arrow here. So that numerator stays the same, and we saw that we have uh, now two terms with a common denominator, and when you have a common denominator, you can combine them, and the way you can combine those with those, those numerators. So this is two minus two, and that, uh, if you think about that minus extends not only to that two, but also to the x, so minus x, all over the denominator of two times x plus two. Uh, you still should have had this on your paper all right. You're supposed to have a paper. Mm -hmm. Emily, you may go. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we have x divided by, I think we saw that two minus two is negative x. Zero. So yeah, so we just have a, a so this is where drawing, you know, drawing really large fraction bars can be helpful. So that this is a really large fraction bar to separate that x up there. And then I have negative x kind of a little bit of a smaller fraction bar, two times x plus two. This is about where we stopped yesterday. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody have any questions sort of revisiting that pathway? <coughs> okay. So the, the new step, the step for today is I'm going to remember or, or remind you of a fact about fraction division or, just, or anything dealing with division. Um, do you remember when you had stuff like uh, two divided by three, and you know two thirds divided by I don't know five over seven? Mm -hmm. Way back when we had fraction division. Okay. I would flip it. You would flip it. You would say multiplying. That's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So division is multiplying by the reciprocal. Right here, I have a division statement. Mm -hmm. I have x divided by all this stuff. So I'm gonna turn this into a multiplication sentence. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna say x times the reciprocal of this denominator. So that's going to be, uh, so what, two times x plus two divided by negative x. X32, I did that. You flipped it? I flipped the denominator because it's this, okay, this bar means one. division, yeah. the same thing as we did over here. Okay, so if you get that, then you're good. We notice here now we have an x in the numerator, an x in the denominator, everything's being multiplied, those are all terms, so those will cancel out. And I still have a negative one right here, so it's really two times x plus two divided by negative one. But in that case, I could just um, uh, maybe put that negative one up here. So it's negative two times x plus two. Now I'm not finished yet. All I've done at this point is just simplified this expression right here. Remember the whole point of this is to find the limit 
of this expression as x approaches negative 2. So at this time, I'll finally just stash that the limit as x approaches negative 2. And we'll see, does direct substitution work on this? Mm -hmm. Can I plug in no. negative 2 here mm -hmm. and not have any issues? I've got negative 2 times negative 2 plus 2. That's interesting. If negative 2 plus 2 is zero. 0. And then 0 oh times no. negative 2 is 0. Yeah. Okay, so I get 0. 0 is a fine answer. 0 is, ironically, what you get a lot of times. But if you have zero in the denominator, no. then it's not allowed. But that's what it was. Yeah, but the numerator's allowed. So you got a big fat zero on this problem. Okay. And we're happy about it. Okay? Um, what I want to do is I want to give you and your table partner, which uh, I'm going to show to you guys when uh, we're choosing what to move real quick. Um, let's have you all look at number 12. And see if you can do that together. See if you can set that one up as a team. Mm. All right, I'll move over there. Yeah. 
Let me know when y'all have an answer, okay? Okay. I see nothing. Separate the water. I mean, so you let me know, are you guys stuck or are you still working through it? Um, I'm not sure because it's, it's okay to simplify it. Like, I mean, if you need to simplify it in one unit or if you can simplify it along. But we have x squared over 3x minus 9 so far. Because what we had was... So you have, you have the numerator, mm -hmm. or the, the x right here, times the reciprocal of the denominator. Mm -hmm. So that would be x. Nope. You, the, you have x over 3x minus 9 divided by x. Flip me. And you're going to get x times 
3 parentheses negative 3 plus x over x right? No. Um, yeah. What's the numerator? What's the denominator? Now, this is a numerator of this fraction. And this fraction right here is the numerator of this fraction. Okay? So I want you to be very clear. This right here is its own thing. This is blah. Blah divided by x. Okay? So if I'm going to do the little division is equal to the reciprocal of the, of the denominator, I'm going to say numerator right here, blah x divided by 3 times negative 3 plus x instead of, you just why write the big fraction bar, big fraction bar times the reciprocal of the denominator. So what's the reciprocal of x? 1 over x. 1 over x. Yeah. Okay, that's what you guys got to do. Mm -hmm. Alright, and Ivan, what did you notice then? Then that you can cross, uh, cross off the x. Now that still leaves me with the one in the numerator, correct? Yeah, so you still have one over negative, uh, or yeah, one it's, over. Well, we had already multiplied it out, so we had. That's fine. Three x minus one. Yeah. And we have the. Uh, this is the expression we're taking the limit as x approaches zero. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So x goes to zero. So that's one over three times negative three, which is one over. Negative So uh, lots of places where you can make a mistake, uh, lots of places where you can trip up, but um, XR, I think the, the issue here was if you were treating this like that previous problem where this was the numerator entirely, and then this was a fraction of the denominator, you know what I'm saying? That's where drawing a big bar can kind of make it a lot more obvious that this is the numerator, this is the denominator. And to finish this problem out properly, it has to be numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, um, I want to talk about these very first few problems, and then I'm going to give you all the rest of the class to get some homework done. Okay, so we'll just uh, skip or postpone the main stuff for today. All right, so uh, this is what's called a piecewise function. We've kind of seen them before, but um, unfortunately, we don't have a graph on this one, right? So this says, uh, find the limit of f of x as x approaches three, where f of x equals negative two x plus one when x is less than or equal to three, and it equals negative x squared plus two x minus two when x is greater than three. You may or may not have seen this uh, in pre-cal last year, but what this says is that this, this function, it's not all a straight line, it's not all a parabola, it's not all a sine, so it's, it's actually, what this graph looks like depends on where you are on the x-axis, okay? So what this says is that if you are at three or lower, then your function graph is gonna look like this. Jeremy, what does this look like? Negative two x plus one. A line. Would you all agree with him mm -hmm. on that? If you are from three and to the right, you're greater than three, then your function graph is gonna look like this. Nick, what does that look like? X squared minus two X plus minus two. What's that? It's irrational. It is not rational, it is a quadratic. It's like a parabola. Which is gonna resemble a parabola, okay? So, um, don't, you don't, I don't want your graph, it's probably gonna be like ridiculously long, but essentially we've got something going like this. We've got a line, so from three and to the left, it's a line like that, okay? And then from three and up, it's a parabola. See, pop quiz, anybody, opening upward or downward? Ooh, um, downward. Uh, upward. Downward. No, oh, down, down. Negative leading Negative. coefficient's gonna open downward, okay? So it's gonna look like a parabola. Everybody understand that? That's kind of what this is if we were to try to graph it. Um, and everything interesting is happening at three. Three's the, three's the point, three's the where it transitions from line to parabola, okay? Um, the thing is, is that we're not really sure, just by looking at that, you know, um, 
So there's a there's going to be a, a filled-in circle right here, and then on this side for the parabola, there's going to be an open circle. What we don't know is as we're approaching three from the left, and as we're approaching three from the right, are we both approaching? Are we converging on the same point, or are we converging on different points? Okay. Now, if our graph looks like this, okay. Are we approaching the same point or different point? Different point, absolutely. However, if it looked like this, we would be approaching the same point, okay? And our answer to the question, what is the limit of f of x that approaches three, would be whatever this value happens to be. Okay? If our graph looks something like this, or it's shifted up or shifted down, something like that, then we would say does not exist because the limit doesn't exist because the behavior differs from left and right. So what we have to do is we have to figure out does the graph of this function look like this or does it look like this? Okay? So the way that we do that is essentially we do two separate problems. We say what is the limit as x approaches 3? from the left of f of x and what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the right. Does that make sense to everybody? And if the answer to this limit problem and this limit problem are the same, then we're approaching the same number from both sides. And approaching the same number from both sides, and that's the, the value of the, of the limit. If we're approaching like 5 from the left and 2 from the right, then our answer will be does not exist. <clears throat> okay? So, uh, let's think about this. The limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the left. So that means I'm walking along this way, all right? Now if I'm walking along this way on this side, what is the formula for the function? What's the formula? Anybody know? What's the formula for this line right here? It's negative 2x plus 1. If I'm uh, traveling along this function from the right, if I'm approaching three from the right, what's my formula? Mm -hmm. Negative x squared plus two x minus two. Yeah. So the limit of x approaches three from the right as negative x squared plus two x minus two. All right. So. Let's figure out what is the limit of negative 2x plus 1 as x approaches 3 from the left. Okay? Well, this is a linear function. We've talked about that before. Just linear functions are well-behaved functions. Mm -hmm. And so if it's well-behaved, what can we do? Direct substitution. Direct substitution. So let's plug in 3 into this. So negative 2 times 3 plus 1, so that's negative 6 plus 1, so we've got negative 5. Once again, I said that's why we did B, because in reality, the, the line really looks like this. <laughs> okay, it stands to come down to a negative 5. Let's look at this equation, and uh, we're going to plug in 3, so it's going to be negative, I'll put this in there, so we've got negative 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 2, so it's going to be negative 9 plus 6 minus 2, so negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. We are going to the same point. We, absolutely, we are going to the same point. And what is that What is that y value that we're going to? Negative 5. Negative 5. So since the limit from the left is negative 5, the limit from the right is negative 5, we can say that the two-sided limit is equal to negative 5. Whoa. Now you might say, you said, Mr. Goddard, you really just plugged in that x value and went through the first part and the second part is completely equal and not necessary. Okay. So if I just said that, I'll just plug it in here, plug it in there, and then see if they're equal. Then you'd be like, 
okay, but you would not understand what's really going on. All right? What's really going on is we're trying to determine if the function is approaching the same y value from the left and from the right. And because there's different equations for the left and for the right, we've got to plug it into the left, we've got to plug it into the right, and we've got to see if the y value is going to be the same. Go ahead, Ivan. So it's not necessarily going to be the same if the it like like see if it says x um, you know is less than three or x is greater than three, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be approaching the same point, right? Absolutely not. I mean, when we ran the calculations, we could have had something that looked like this, Yo, where the line was coming down to this to this y value of like two, and the parabola was coming up to this point maybe of like six. And in which case we would have had a, a, a different number here from here. Oh, that's true because it's calculating the y value, so then that could be anything. Exactly. Yep. So if you get different limits, then it becomes. Uh, yes. Yep. If you get different numbers from the left and from the right, then it starts sounding weird because the behavior, the function behavior, differs from the left and from the right at that point. Yep. Good stuff. Other questions. Y'all think you have enough to finish up this homework? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, you've got 10 minutes left of class. Uh, if you have some of these already answered, I'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right. And uh, do you want to do our work or do it go for it separately? You, uh, it's fine if you do it separately, but then just staple that to your paper. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I said totally fine if you. Uh, Anyway, today we talked about uh, two, these two additional methods, the combining fraction method, as well as how to solve piecewise functions uh, analytically. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching.